Dear students, in the last class we studied about government, democracy, pillars of democracy, and today we study our third chapter, India during the struggle period 206 to 1757 AD, and this begins with Delhi Sultanate. Delhi Sultanate started in 206 in India, and there were many dynasties in Delhi Sultanate: Slave Dynasty, Tughlaq Dynasty. Khalji dynasty, Sayyid dynasty, and Lodi dynasty. Today we will study about Yamini, Ilbari, or Slave dynasty. Before we study Slave dynasty, we would like to study the circumstances prevailing before Delhi Sultanate establishment of Slave dynasty. There were many attacks from the Arabians and continuous they attacked over Indian territory on the west border of India. There were Mongol disturbances also in the northeast. So this whole west border was very hot at that time and Indian people, Indian rulers continuously fought with them and protected the borders of our country. But since many attacks were taking place, the important naval attack first was at Thane in 636 AD that was uh, unsuccessful because of the warrior people living in India at that time and second attack took place on the Baraj and Devil Court of Sin. That attempt also was made unsuccessful. But the most significant attack took place in 1712 by Muhammad bin Qasim. And this war, which took place in Sindh, resulted in a new situation in India. And from there on, the Muslim attackers, Muslim invaders, became powerful. And after that, Muhammad Ghazni came. He came to plunder the wealth of India. And he plundered up to he fought in Kashmir, he fought in Punjab, then went up to Gujarat. Then came Muhammad Ghori, who was defeated in the first battle of Tarayan by Prathiva Chauhan. But in the second battle of Tarayan, he defeated Prathiva Chauhan. And from there on, the Muslim Empire established in India. And after some time, Muhammad Ghori went back to Central Asia giving the charge to Qutub Buddhi Abak here when he went to Central Asia he died somehow and now Qutub Buddhi never became the Sultan of Delhi Sultanat and he established Sri dynasty since he was the slave of Muhammad Ghori so dynasty which began with uh, Qutub Buddhi Abak is known as slave dynasty he was Lakash he used to give many amount to in charity, so he was known as Lavash. He gave respect to the literate person, so Hassan Nizami was given the protection in his empire. And he was a good um, architect, so he had interest in architecture. So he laid the foundation of Qutub, Qutub Minar and he constructed the first story of Qutub Minar. Qutub Minar is named after has been given the name of Qutubuddin Bhaktiya Taki, the Sufi saint of his period. In 1210, he died playing Chogan, which is known also as Polo. He was fond of Polo. He died while playing Polo in 1210. And after that, in 1210 came the Sultan of the uh, Sayyid dynasty. Iltutmish was son in law of Qutubuddin Abak. Iltutmish was a slave also of Qutubuddin Abak. And he made slave dynasty very strong by waging war in India just after becoming the Sultan in 1223. He waged war against Malwa and won conquered territory of Malwa. Then in 1226, he attacked over uh, Radhambur in Rajasthan and uh, annexed it. Then he attacked over Walia, Jalor, and he conquered the surrounding areas and established the power and paramount of 
there is Satra, Sai dynasty in the surrounding regions. When he was about to die, he thought Raghunuddin Firoz would become the king, but he was Raghunuddin Firoz's son was not fit to become the sultan. He was a tyrant. He was unpopular also. So he declared Razia as his successor. The only shortcomings in Razia was that she was a woman, but she was very powerful. She threw the garb of woman and came in the attire of warrior. She discontinued wearing veil parda and thereby she became very uh, unpopular among the Turkish nobles and aristocrats. They united against her. Rajia gave importance to an Abyssinian warrior, Yakut, and she gave him some important post also in his empire. And that was the another reason of Turkish nobles. They became annoyed with Rajia, and when Rajia sent Yakut in the campaign of Sahin to quell the revolt there, Yakut was assassinated. Now Rajia had to marry Althunia, but both died in 1240. Then came Rajia's two brothers, one after one, but they were not effective rulers. In the last, Nasiruddin Mahmud in 1246, after the death of Rajia in 1240, he occupied the throne and he ruled for nearly 20 years. And behind his effective rule, there was support of Ghiyasuddin Bandar. And when he died in 265, Nasiruddin Mahmud, Balban became the Sultan of the Sultanate. Balban, Ghiyasuddin Balban was a slave of Hindutvish. He was very intelligent, he was very powerful, he was a good warrior also. And the most important thing which he had, which he possessed, was his knowledge, was his experience. He knew very well the Chalgani system. Chalgani system, the group band of 40 nobles, band of 40 aristocrats, Turkish aristocrats. He knew how they conspired against the state. So just after becoming the Sultan, he controlled the Chalgani system. He maintained state discipline over them and he introduced Turkish culture of Sultan Babos in the royal court. It means that who came to meet the Sultan had to bow before the Sultan and kiss his feet. Balban knew about the events taking place surrounding areas to control the attack of the Mongols in West Asia, in West borders. He restructured his army, Divani Arich, which is known as the military department. He restructured it and posted people on the frontiers to control the attack of the Mongols and to quell the revolt inside the territory, inside the dynasty, inside the premises of Delhi Sultanate, he adopted the policy of iron and blood. Very important policy, very strict discipline. He took very harsh action against those who revolted against him. He killed the man and enslaved their children and women. So there were establishing law and order, establishing peace in the society, in the country, in the empire and he maintained law and order by controlling thieves and robbers also so that people could live in peace. He thought Sultan as the representative of the God on the earth and therefore every person should follow the command of the Sultan, that was the cause of his success. When he died, again revolt took place, disturbance took place, and out of many fights, 
Jalaluddin, Ahmad Victorious, and Jalaluddin Khilji established Khaji dynasty that we will study tomorrow.